So Ernest Becker, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, the philosopher, he wrote the book, Denial of Death, and his idea is that one of the core motivations of human beings is our terror of death, our fear of death. Uh, that's what makes us unique from cats. Cats are just surviving. They do not have a deep under, like um, cognizance, introspection that over the horizon is the end. And he says that, I mean, there's a terror management theory that just all these psychological experiments that show that basically this idea that all of human civilization, everything we create is kind of uh, trying to forget if even for a brief moment that we're going to die. When, when do you think humans understand that they're going to die? Is it learned early on also? Like, I don't, no, to at what point? I mean, it's a it's a question. Like you know, at what point do you realize that you know what death really is? And I think most people don't actually realize what death is, right? I mean, most people believe that you go to heaven or something, right? Well, so the so <laughs> to push back on that, what Ernest Becker says and um, Sheldon Solomon, all of those folks, and I find those ideas a little bit compelling. Is that there is moments in life, early in life, a lot of this fun happens early in life when you are. Uh, when you do deeply experience the terror of this realization and all the things you think about, about religion, all those kinds of things that we kind of think about more like teenage years and later, we're talking about way earlier. No, it's like seven or eight years, something you, like that, yeah. You, you realize, holy crap, this is uh, like the mystery, the terror, like it's almost like you're a, a little prey, a little baby deer sitting in the darkness of the jungle of the woods, looking all around you, there's darkness full of terror. I mean, that's that realization says, okay, I'm gonna go, go back in the comfort of my mind where there is a where there is a deep meaning, where there is a maybe like pretend I'm immortal in however way, how, however kind of idea I can construct to help me understand that I'm immortal. Religion helps with that. But you can you can delude yourself in all kinds of ways. Like lose yourself in the busyness of each day, have little goals in mind, all those kinds of things to think that it's gonna go on forever. And you kind of know you're gonna die, yeah, and it's gonna be sad, but you don't really understand that you're going to die. And so that's, that's their idea. And I, f I find that compelling because it does seem to be a core unique aspect of human nature that we were able to think that we're going, we're able to really understand that this life is finite. Uh, that seems okay. important. There's, there's a bunch of different things there. So first of all, I don't think there is a qualitative difference between, between us and cats in the term. I think the difference is that we just have a better long-term ability to predict, you know, in the long term, And so, we have a better understanding of how the world works, so we have better understanding of you know finiteness of life and things like that. So that, we have a, a better planning engine than cats. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, but perhaps, well, what's the motivation for for planning that? Well, far? I think it's just a side effect of the fact that we have just a better planning engine because it makes us, uh, as I said, you know, the essence of intelligence is the ability to predict, and so the because we're smarter. As a side effect, we also have this ability to kind of make predictions about our own. Uh, future existence or lack thereof. Okay. Um, you say religion uh, helps with that. I think religion hurts, actually. Um, it makes people worry about, like, you know, what's going to happen after their death, etc. If you believe that, you know, uh, you just don't exist after death, like, you know, it solves completely the problem, Wait, at you, least. You're saying if you don't believe in God, you don't worry about what happens after death? Yeah. I don't know. You only I... worry about, the, about uh, you know, this life, because that's the only one you have. I think it's well. I don't. I don't know if I were to say what Ernest Becker says, and I would say I agree with him more uh, than not. Is uh, you do deeply worry uh, if you if you believe there's no God, there's still a deep worry, like of the mystery of it all. Like, how does that make any sense? That it just ends. I don't think we can truly understand that this right. End, I mean, so much of our life, the consciousness, the ego is uh, invested in this in this being. And then- to, to, Science keeps bringing humanity down from its pedestal. And that's, yeah, but that's just another, the, that's, another yes. example of it. That's wonderful. But for us individual humans, we don't like to be brought down from a pedestal. I'm you're fine saying with like, it. <laughs> what, but see, you're fine with it because, well, so what Ernest Becker would say is you're fine with it because that's just a more peaceful existence for you, but you're not really fine. You're hiding from it. In fact, some of the people that experience the deepest trauma 
uh, that it, earlier in life, they often, before they seek extensive therapy, will say, I'm fine. It's like uh, when you talk to people who are truly angry, how are you doing? I'm fine. The, qu the question is, what's going on? Now, I had in, a near-death experience. I had a very bad uh, motorbike accident when I was yes. 17. So, and, uh, But that didn't have any impact on my reflection on that topic. So I'm, yeah. I'm basically just playing a bit of a devil's advocate, pushing back on wondering is it truly possible to accept death? And the flip side that's more interesting, I think, for AI and robotics is how important is it to have this as one of the suite of motivations is to uh, not just avoid falling off the roof or something like that, but ponder the, the end of the ride. Uh, if you listen to the Stoics, it's, uh, it's a great motivator. It adds a sense of urgency. So maybe to truly fear death or be cognizant of it might give uh, a deeper meaning and urgency to the moment to live fully. I may, I may, maybe I don't disagree with that. Uh, I mean, I think what motivates me here is, uh, you know, knowing more about, about human nature. I mean, I think uh, human nature and human intelligence is a big mystery. It's a scientific mystery. Mm -hmm. Uh, in addition to you know philosophical and etc but you know I'm a true believer in science so um, and 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 I do have kind of a belief that for complex systems like like the brain and the mind the the way to understand it is to try to reproduce it with you know artifacts that you build because you know what's essential to it when you try to build it. You know, the same way, um, I've used this analogy before with you, I believe, um, <clears throat> the same way we, we only started to understand uh, aerodynamics when we started building airplanes, and that helped us understand how birds fly. Uh, you know, so I, I think there's kind of a, a similar process here where we don't have a theory of, a full theory of intelligence, but building, you know, intelligent artifacts will help us perhaps develop some, you know, underlying theory that uh, encompasses not just artificial implements, but also uh, human and biological intelligence in general.